yes, he did it. Well, he picked me up, turned me all around, placed my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did. Oh, yes, he did. I tell you everything that happened to me that was good, God did. Oh, yes, he did. I was lost, living in a world of sin. Jesus came and to me on in. I tell you everything, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. I tell you everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Turn me all around, place my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, He did. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, He did. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. He picked me up, turned me all around, placed my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened to me, everything that happened to me. Everything that happened to you. Oh, yes, he did. Good morning, New Sight. We please stand. And Merry Christmas to everyone. I'll begin with the um, call to worship. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. As a dew of Hermon and as a dew that descended upon the mount of Zion, for there the Lord commanded thee blessings, even life evermore. Let's pray. The Father God in heaven, we approach you this morning in your son's holy name. Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, first to honor you, and we thank you for being our God. Now, God, God, Holy Spirit, God, Holy Spirit, we invite you in your presence to lead the services, allow what's said today and what's prayed today and what's preached today, give you honor and glory and praise. We thank you and honor you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, follow about musical offering.
may be seated. <clears throat> we welcome you today to um, this, this Christmas, I mean, this uh, morning service. Welcome the visitors, those who are visitors. We welcome you today. We welcome you those who are, are basically viewing through the um, podcast and, and so forth and so on. <laughs> We're now followed by the announcements and offertory prayer. In that order. Thank you. Holiday registration schedule. Registration deadline for the December 26th church service will be Wednesday, December 22nd by 12 p.m. And for the January 2nd church service, the deadline will be Thursday, December 30th by 12 p.m. Please note the new registration deadline, effective Sunday, January 9, 2022. We ask that you register for Sunday service by 12 p.m. the Friday prior to worship. Also, registration can be made by calling the church secretary at 540-371-1153 between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. The new year is upon us. As we begin closing out the year, the finance ministry will be preparing to mail out the year-end contribution statements. If you have moved or changed addresses or simply desire your mail be sent to an alternate location, please contact the church office at 540-371-1153 between the hours of 10 to 2 to update your information. We want to ensure the statements reach you you may expect to start receiving the statements toward the end of February. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Shallow Baptist Church Old Site, Mount Zion Baptist Church, and Shallow Baptist Church New Site present a joint watch night service 2021. Shallow Baptist Church Old Site, 801 Sophia Street, December 31st, 2021, from 11 to midnight. You must register online in order to attend in person at shilohosite.org. Ways to watch the service online. First, shilohosite.org. Two, Facebook at shilohosite. Three, Zoom, ID number 932-9289. 3123 pound sign, password 7 pound sign, or Zoom by phone 301 715 8592. Thank you for your attention. Good morning. Good morning. Would you please join me for the offertory prayer? Gracious and eternal God, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you sent your son to show us the way and to die for our sins. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of the gifts that you have given us, that the ways that you have provided for us. And Lord, as we lift this offering, we ask that it would be pleasing in your sight and acceptable. And we just thank you for all that you are and all that you have given to us. And we ask that you would help us to be good stewards of everything that you give to us. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See 
King, glory, oh glory, glory to the newborn King. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all. Jesus, so holy, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. So listen to the angels sing the glory, the glory, the glory to the new born King.
praise to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. Hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's worthy, church. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We do give praises to the spirit of our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Praise and thank God for each and every one of you that are here this morning and those that are chimed in. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for all of your Christmas cards. May God continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Holy Father, our loving Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Spirit of the Most High God. For Father, in Jesus' name, we come to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. for your presence, your power, your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for this privilege to be able to, he to say what thus saith the Lord. And Father, I pray for a fresh anointing yes, upon the messenger and the message. Father, empower me, Father. Stand up in me and allow your Holy Spirit to take control. And allow your word to go forth with power and authority under the anointing. And Father God, allow your word to accomplish all that you sent it forth to do. Anoint the ears and the hearts of each and every one of us. And in all this, we be careful to give you the praise, yes. the glory, and the honor. Hallelujah. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, will you turn with me to the book of Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 6. We'll be reading, start reading at verse number 8. Isaiah chapter 6, beginning at verse number 8. And it reads as follows. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Amen. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tent. And it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. May the Lord continue to bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. We will use for a subject this morning Isaiah's message to be rejected. In this chapter, we have a vision which Isaiah saw of the glory of God, the terror it put him into, and the relief given him against that terror. 
by an assurance of the pardon of his sins. A commission which he received to go as a prophet in God's name, preaching to the impenitent yet with the reservation of mercy for a remnant. And it was as to an evangelical prophet being in agreement with the Christian gospel that these things were shown him and said to him. The moral and religious teachers of his time, the priests taught only the rites or ceremonies to be performed. Many of the minor prophets, and Isaiah said, only a few would survive the judgment events, basically because they repented and rested their future on the compassion of their Lord. In the exile, those who believe in the only true God would be gathered and returned to the promised land. It was prophesied that Judah would be destroyed for rebelling against the Lord of the covenant. Many would lose their lives. Others would be taken into exile for 70 years. The political, religious, and social institutions of the state would be eliminated. These actions prompt God's judgment. It was said of them, they are gone away backward. The people are rebellious, children who refuse to listen and obey. The prophets interpreted the spiritual truth underline the rituals. The work of the prophet was distinctive. He denounced the evil or sins of his time. He was especially zealous in exposing the emptiness of religious formality, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In offering of sacrifices and performing religious rites. Up to now, Isaiah having seen little success of his ministry. And therefore God saw fit to renew his commission in such a manner as might encouraged his zeal, though he seemed to labor in vain. Success is not the message of faithful service, but a favorable termination. Scripture said, but be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He said also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Notice he did not take it upon himself to go, but he waited to hear from the Lord. He said, then said I, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. He did not just send him, but he gave him the word. This was the message he was to preach. God takes Isaiah at his word and here sends him on a strange mission to foretell the ruin of his people. If God has called you, 
He will give you what to say. We are to go to preach or teach what thus saith the Lord. Isaiah is to preach God's message even though the people will not get it. He having quoted the prophecy that its principal reference was to the days of the Messiah. These things were said to him and it was said by him for nothing was said by him as a prophet which was not first said to him. As Jesus was teaching one day, and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake a parable unto the people. He said, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and some fell upon a rock. And some fell upon thorns, and some fell upon good ground. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that had ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they singing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. This people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, and their eyes they have closed, not God, they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them as it was then in the days of our Lord Jesus it is the same in our time this message of the word of the Lord is to bring about a change in the lives. We are to turn from sin and turn to God. He said unto them, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. God's word effectually, God works effectually in them who believe and speak through his word to those who listen with their heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. The heart of man is as soil to the seed of the word of God. He is capable of receiving it and bringing forth the fruit of it. But unless that seed be sown in it, it will bring forth nothing of great use or value. For whosoever despises the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. We should desire earnestly to know the true intent and full extent of the word we hear. For we are ever indebted. We owe much gratitude for the free grace of God toward us. Yet there is the righteous hand of God sometimes to be acknowledged in the blindness of those who persist in unbelief by which they are justly punished for their resistance 
of the divine light of Jesus Christ. Sinners are brought to see with their eyes, to discern spiritually discernment, to the reality of divine things, to understand with their heart, to be converted and effectually turn from sin to Jesus Christ. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Though many that hear do not believe, yet those that believe have first heard. The beginning progress and the strength of faith are by hearing. The word of God is therefore called the word of faith. God gives faith, but it is by the word as the instrument. Paul said unto the Jews at Rome, concerning the Christian religion, he said, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, that which would be fulfilled in you, saying, go unto the people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. This prophecy is referred to no less than six times in the New Testament. That which was spoken of the sinners in Isaiah's time was fulfilled in those in Christ's time. And it is still being fulfilled in our time. Paul expounded the kingdom of God to them that it is heavenly and spiritually. The design were to bring them to Christ, to convince them of his being the Messiah, the promised one. Scripture said, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Stephen also preached Jesus unto the Jewish council. He took a risk and preached a sermon he knew his hearers would not like. He said that throughout Israel's history, the nation had repeatedly rejected God's messengers. And now they had rejected the Messiah. Stephen's sermon provoked a strong reaction. They cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. They cast him out of the city and stoned him to death because of his preaching of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He wanted them to know that they were not under the law any longer. Church, people don't want to hear the truth of the gospel. They know if they hear it, they must give an account for what they have heard. But it was now grace, but it was now grace unto salvation. And because of their unbelief, he called them stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. They were circumcised in the flesh, but not in the heart and the spirit. Isaiah is here given to understand that the people to whom he was sent will turn a deaf ear to his preaching and willfully shut their eyes against the will of God to them. That they would not be made better by his ministry, but they should be made worse by it. He said, then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. 
The priest's work was to teach the people, but they teach for high, and will be hired to teach anything which they know will please the people. Isn't that the same way it is today? Yeah. Scripture said, therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountains as high places of the forest because of the iniquity of the people. The people only rise as high as their leader. Church, it is not our job to save anyone, but it is our job to minister, to preach Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. It is our job to say, what thus saith the Lord? Preach and teach the word of God. Preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. Even when they don't want to hear it, continue to say, what thus saith the Lord. He said, until the Lord had removed men far away. And there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. He is here given to understand that the generality of the people to whom he was sent would turn a deaf ear to his preaching. He asked, Lord, how long must I and other prophets, shall we always labor in vain among them? Church, he knew they would not hear him. And will things never be better? This was to be a type of the state of the Jewish church in the days of the Messiah, when they should reject the gospel and should therefore be rejected of God. But God had not cast away his people, which he foreknew. He is a merciful God. He said, but yet in it shall be a tent, a tie. And they shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. But a very small number shall return out of captivity to their own land that the distinguished remnant shall be the holy seed of God. Remember what the scripture said of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But God answered unto him, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Remember also, after the flood, the divine judgment of God, Noah and his family were saved as a remnant. The same could be said of Lot when Sodom was destroyed. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace that undeserved favor given by God to man. God raised up Israel from one man, Abraham, and created a nation that was to be a witness to God's truth and of his redemption plan. Israel as a whole had not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election had obtained it and the rest were blinded. God had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Though God thoroughly blessed them, yet there never seemed to have been a full commitment to Israel to the person of God. But in all this, God did not throw them away. As a nation, they rejected their Messiah. 
had him nailed to an old rugged cross. But on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. Yet, through it all, God has not changed his mind concerning Israel's purpose. God created Israel to be the head of all nations. And for the grace of God, the head of all nations, they will be. The Lord said unto Abram, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families, all families, all families of the earth be blessed. God's covenant with Abraham is an everlasting covenant. It's still today. The severe consequences of sin brought about judgment upon Israel. Church as it was with Israel, God's chosen people. The same with the church today. Those that continue to turn a deaf ear to the word of God. Those who refuse to hear what thus saith the Lord. Those who are in rejection of God's word, Jesus Christ, his son. Choosing and causing divine judgment to come upon yourselves. You are allowing yourselves to be taken and held in bondage by the enemy. In the Old Testament, God spake to his people through the prophets, and many rejected God's word. But it was all leading to this. And in various times and in various ways, he spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Hear ye him, the word of the Lord. Church, you have no excuse. For in this time of unrest, we need to go to the word of God. We need to hear what thus saith the word of God. What is he saying to us in this season? Church, get in the word of God. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Amen. For the answer is in the word of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Global call Sunday. He taught of my kaya. Hallelujah, Lord God. This is called for discipleship. The officers are standing here. If you are here this morning, we don't take for granted that everyone that has chimed in today are saved. So if you are under the sound of my voice and has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and made him Lord of your life, we invite you to come to Jesus right where you are. Whether you are here or whether you are online or on the, te the telephone. For he is just a prayer away. If you want to just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent of my sin and accept your death on the cross as payment for my sin. Thank you for coming into my heart and saving me. I accept you as my savior and make you Lord of my life. Now you are born again if you prayed that prayer and believe it in your heart. You are a Christian. We also have a salvation line on the bottom of your screen and those that are on the phone.
you can call in. Someone that's there that will answer your call and will lead you through the salvation plan. And if you need prayer, they will pray with you. The number is 540-779-7474. Just call that number today and they will lead you in the salvation plan and pray for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This time for altar prayer. Let us pray. Holy Father, our loving Heavenly Father. Father, we worship you, we praise you, we bless your name. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Father, you're worthy of all our praise. We praise and thank you, Father, for Christmas Day. And we thank you, Father, for the reason. We thank you for giving of yourself, your gift to the whole world. Not to just families or neighbors or friends, but to the whole world you gave the gift. That whosoever believing in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Father God, the gift is still, Father God, being extended to each and every one of us today. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Father, for this time of worship, praise, Father God, and fellowship, and Father God, teaching and preaching the word of God. And I thank you, Father, for giving me to say what thus saith the Lord, and allowing your word to go forth with power and authority under the anointing. And Father, I thank you for not allowing your word to return unto you, boy, but you will allow it to accomplish all that you sent it forth to do. Father, I continue to pray for shallow. Father God, I pray, Lord God, for healing where healing is needed, oh God. Spiritually, soulless, physically, Lord God, financially, emotionally, in relationships. Father, we pray, Father God, for comfort to the bereaved family. Father, the hams, be with that family, Lord. Continue to see them through. Strengthen them, oh God. You are their comforter. And Father God, surround them, that people that will comfort them with the comfort wherewith you have comforted us with. Father God, where this by phone or in person, Lord, use us, Father. And Father, I pray, Lord God, for every ministry of shallow new sight. Continue to be with the diaconate, Father God, as they continue, Father God, to lead in ministry and spiritual uplifting of this church, this body. Father, I continue to pray for the trustees, Father God, that you will continue to be with them as they continue to deal with the business and financial part of the church, Lord. And I thank you for allowing the church to continue, Father God, to move smoothly and give us the growth spiritually, Lord God, every day in our walk with you, Lord. Give us not to turn aside to the left or to the right, not to look back, because if we look back, we'll end up stumbling and falling, oh God. But help us to keep our eyes fixed on you and not to lose sight of who you are and what you are. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for giving us to continue to rejoice and be glad. We worship you, we praise you, we bless your name. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Thank you for keeping us covered. For it's in Jesus' name I pray and ask it all. To God be the glory. Now it's time for the benediction. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight, to whom be glory forever and ever. But it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it. God bless you. Go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No. Mm-hmm.